I suppose hairline fractures can be spooky, but that's not exactly what we're going for here today. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Have you ever thought, gee, bones are cool, bones are fashion, too bad I have all of this skin covering them up so that no one can see them. No one's ever thought that before. <laughs> well, if for some reason you're demented and you have, boy, have I got the perfect garment for you. A rib cage corset? A rib cage corset is not a new concept, and this video is just another instance of Pinterest hacking my brain, infesting it with notions of beautiful anatomical garments and then hijacking my YouTube channel. So here's the sitch. I am currently in the thick of my big Halloween project and I just need something a little bit more digestible this week. Ribcage corsets were kind of all over the internet this year and maybe even last year. I'm not on TikTok so I mean your girl just doesn't know. But this is a long established trend. People do it all kinds of sorts of different ways and at various times in the comments on my channel you guys have asked me to make one which is a great coincidence because because, I mean, I've been wanting to make one of these anyways. But listen, I can't do a classic, standard, run-of-the-mill ribcage corset. I have to bring some of my own imagination and artistry and flair to this project so that I don't feel like I'm just copying an internet trend, which of course I am. This just is gonna make me feel a little bit less derivative about it. So the way I wanna make this idea a little bit more original is by combining several different Pinterest concepts. The first one being the ribcage corset. And then I wanna take that and meld it with these beautiful little pearl drippy vampire bite necklaces. I've seen this everywhere and I feel like it is just asking to be combined with a bone themed design. So here is the general design that I'm thinking. Basically pretty anatomically accurate, pretty realistic, with then just red beading and embellishments and some pearls just dripping off of the bottom part of the rib cage. And then the centerpiece would be kind of like a heart area. Fancy beading, embroidery, that sort of thing. I think that would also be very nicely tied in with like some beading around the neck area to make it look like a choker piece. I think this design is going to make for a really lovely, tastefully gory garment. So first, I I have to figure out how I am going to construct it. So in terms of construction, a lot of people use hot glue. They just put a bunch of hot glue onto their dress form. And there you go, bam. I've also seen people use foam clay, other types of clay. Like there's really a ton of different ways you can do this, but I personally have an abundance of warbler scraps around, take your first shot. So I think that is how I'm going to go about constructing my ribcage corset. So let's go ahead and get on that. So for our bones, we are going to be using all of this. Keep on coming, there's more. There you go, I don't want to leave anyone out. Welcome to the party. You're about to get burned alive. So one of my favorite things about Orbla, even though it costs me my immortal soul, is that you have all these leftover scraps and you can actually use them for things. So I am basically going to go about doing this by sculpting with Warbla and trying not to burn my little fingers. To start us off, I took some general body measurements, one for the circumference of my bust and rib cage, one across my shoulders, and one from the center of my clavicle to the bottom of my sternum. I also covered my dress form with a little saran wrap to save it from the chunks of scalding plastic I'm about to heap onto it. Wow. Fashion. I began by heating up a blob of warbler to serve as our sternum. The main goal when I'm prepping a chunk of warbler that's made of other scraps is to mix it together well enough to make it more homogenous. <laughs> Art. I promise you, it's gonna make sense in a second. Don't even worry about it. The objective at the beginning here is to get all the seams and lines out of it from where the pieces were jagged and not cut in a proper way. Because bones don't have seams and lines in them. At least we hope not, right? I suppose hairline fractures can be spooky, but that's not exactly what we're going for here today. We're really going for a lump here, which is the first time I've ever said that in my entire life. No lumps. Not this year. This mixing process can be a little difficult because it's like touching a pile of mashed potatoes fresh out of the microwave with your bare skin. But don't worry, I did wise up later and use gloves. But I eventually got it into a sternum-like shape and used my sculpting tools to give it a little detail. I repeated that process for our artificial clavicle, but this time with a little galvanized wire in the middle to help shape it. And I also decided that a galvanized wire base was a good idea for all the ribs and cut corresponding pieces for that full rack. I made each individual rib by just heating up a thin strip of warbler and 
with my gloves on, because holy crap, metal is conductive and this gets hot so fast, mushed and shaped it onto my galvanized wire strip. There's enough flexibility in Warblow once it's cool to bend the wire into a nice curve, so this method actually works great. Sculpting the individual ribs out of thermoplastic took a while and required a little bit more Warblow than I expected, but I think it's worth it for the stability and flexibility. I tried to make this piece look pretty anatomically accurate at first glance, but I did simplify this rib cage to have 16 ribs as opposed to the usual 24. At the bottom of the rib cage, I give the ribs a nice curve to help the beads dangle nicely later on. And I say that as if it's a design choice and a normal rib cage doesn't just look like that. And when it came time to attach the ribs, I did that by heating up both ends and pressing them together and securing them into place with a little additional warbler. To create my back closure, I attached the ribs together in sets of two so I'd have less lacing to do, and created rough little loops to run my lacing through. And this is what it looked like so far, which is creepily realistic, but don't worry about it, we're about to fix that. Finally, I twisted some thin lengths of wire together and attached them to the bottom of the rib cage so I'd have little loops to easily hang my beading off of. And there you have it. There it is, the base of the rib cage corset. Wow. Now, if you're watching this video, you might be wondering, how do I make things. And the answer to that question, as always, is this video sponsor Skillshare. You guys know I'm crazy about Skillshare. I take a lot of classes on there anytime I don't know how to make something. And if you're particularly interested in sculpting, which is a major highlight of this video, then I highly recommend checking out I the Crafters class. Intro to Polly Merclay, Sculpting for Absolute Beginners, which I have taken and also taught me a whole heck of a lot about Polly Merclay that I didn't know before. So if you want to check it out, you can get 30 days free plus 40% off your first year of a Skillshare membership if you sign up using my link below. When you do, it helps both me and the channel out, so thank you so much to everyone who has done so. Now, let's get back to it. Hello there, it's the next day, ish. Last night I finished the construction of the main base for the ribcage corset. I think it's coming out wonderfully, frankly better than I expected. I'm really glad I decided to put galvanized wire inside of the ribs themselves because I think it makes them a little bit more structural. So if for some reason you're thinking about doing this, which I actually think you should, I recommend this as a fun little activity. That's a good way to go if you're going more the like clay route, which I'm sure you could do that with glue too, but anyways. So today we are just on Wow, the wind is very aggressive. Calm down. Use your words. So today we are just on decoration and painting. You guys already know I'm planning on adding a bunch of beading to this, which I have already started on. I went this morning and strung together a bunch of little bits of beading so that I can then hang those from the corset. I did a lot of that off camera because it takes literally forever and filming it is both confusing and boring, so why would I show you that? I have literally been at this for like two hours, so that's really cool. Um, beading takes a really, really long time. I'm not even done yet. Here you go. Here Here's b-roll of just the pretty finished product. That's what you guys care about anyways. But in addition to that, I have also gone ahead and made another abundance of little hot glue filigree molds. Now you might be thinking, Kira, aren't those molds becoming a little bit of a crutch in your work here recently? To which I would reply, I mean, yeah. This project this week is me time. So I don't really care how impressive the end result of this is. So we have beading, we have hot glue, we have like a nice little effervescent paint job. Mm, I just love that word. And the last thing I did earlier today was I also mixed up some like red mica powder, sparkly UV resin nonsense, and I made some little gemstones to also glue onto this piece. So basically this week we have the Kira trifecta. Can you tell I'm having fun? So before it gets too dark to prime and airbrush things, I need to actually decorate this corset. So what I'm thinking for this piece is to give it a similar overall look to my ghost spider Halloween costume from last year, but to just be able to put detail into it this time. I kind of <laughs> ran out of time on that costume and I didn't get to do a lot of the things like adding a little wash to the filigree or adding some like pearlescent paint to really make the details pop or a bunch of beading to the surface. I think that would all be very cool. So yes, I'm thinking that should involve the filigree pieces. And I do want to stop relying on these so much because, I mean, yeah, it's definitely becoming a crutch. And something that I think is going to help out with that is I think I'm going to learn to 3D model soon. So I'm thinking that might help me to like 3D print some of these pieces that I designed myself. Or maybe help me to like make molds so that I can make some that are flexible. I don't know. We have a lot of possibilities here. So I'm thinking probably about here. I just want to make the surface texture of this look a little bit less realistic and a little bit more ornate. 
because right now it is looking a little bit too realistic and that's making me uncomfortable. I mean, tis the season of being spooky, but I want to be just a little less disturbing here. Again, I don't want to overdo it, but I'm thinking then I can add some of these thin pieces to the ribs themselves. Maybe like here. Do you ever just, against your better judgment, touch fresh hot glue because it's just like not doing what you want it to do and you know it's going to hurt, but you don't care because you just don't want hot glue in that area. That is why um, I have no fingerprints anymore. It really doesn't have much of an effect on me. That's how you know you've destroyed the nerve endings in your fingertips. Not to get too off topic here, but something that I'm actually very sad about is this year I've had like no time to watch Halloween movies. Whenever I finish working on my stuff, normally I'm just like too tired and exhausted. So just throw on something that I've seen before, like freaking Seinfeld, as if I have not seen that show a million times and I could really stand to just like watch a new movie for once. Or instead of something that I have seen before that's like a sitcom, I <laughs> a couple of months ago binge watched all of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and I'm almost done with Angel and I have become absolutely ridiculously obsessed, like it's an actual problem. And now I've gotten my brother to watch it and I've got my other friend to watch it. So I'm re-watching it with my brother. So that's the other thing that I've been doing in the evenings instead of watching Halloween movies like I probably should because I'm complaining about it right now. Ow. <laughs> but I guess my whole purpose for saying any of this is that I really should fix this. Last year I spent most of the spooky season just like binge watching movies and it was super fun and I got to see a lot of stuff that I hadn't seen before. So if you have like a kind of more obscure Halloween centric movie or like horror movie suggestion, please tell me in the comments so that I can rectify my error and actually start getting a little bit more festive. I feel like I've seen a lot of the more popular Halloween movies but I know I have blind spots. I know there's stuff out there that I haven't seen. What are we thinking of this so far? It's not too much, right? That's that's a normal amount. Either way, I can definitely work with this. Now it's dark outside, but let's give this baby a base coat. try to make a little pearly, slightly bloody choker to go with this since I didn't make the corset go all the way up my neck. I don't want to make it too crazy complicated, but I do want to make it a piece of jewelry that I can wear with like other things besides the corset, so I want it to hold up on its own. And the executive producer is batting at my fishing line, which is very helpful. Thank you for doing that. You gonna try to get it? Oh, it's extra challenging because you can't see it very well. Wow, good girl. <laughs> that was a big one. Good job, you got it. Good job. You guys wanna hear some HD purring? Ooh, look at that. I think the strategy here is just figure out how long to do something like that. Oh, very helpful behavior. See, it's important to cut this before your filming assistant claws your leg off. Ow! You have tiny knives on your hands. How many times have I told you? And I do want to do multiple rows of this. I don't want to be crazy complicated with this because it will take a thousand years if I am. Sick. Executive producer, do you want your toy back? I have so many pearls and it makes me feel very powerful. is done. We can paint. It's got 
a nice base layer going here, so I don't wanna make the paint job too crazy complicated. I didn't use a white for most of the base coat. I did a first coat of like a yellow color, and then I went in with some white, and then I kind of rounded everything out and gave it some tonality with the pink that I used whenever I made my like pastel witch costume. And it gave it some nice depth, so it's not just all white, because I don't think that necessarily looks very good. I think it's also going to provide some contrast for me to now work on top of. I need a rag. Where's my rag? So I'm gonna first go and just give it a quick wash just so everything is not so stark. I was gonna say white, but it's more of like a fleshy pink color. It's mostly the color of my skin tone. I'm using more of like a purple wash for this because I don't want it to be black or brown. I don't want it to turn out dirty. I just want it to give some contrast to the filigree on here. I figured purple would be a good color to just like contrast the base coat that I have here. Again, not being too crazy with it this time. I'm actually making something that I think is attainable. If you wanted to make this, you definitely probably could. So now I'm just gonna go in and dry brush on some pearlescent white just to bring out some of those details and make some of this pop again. I also added some drippy red blood stains to this just to add a little bit more vibrance. And I also added in a little bit of gold leaf to tie in some of the colors with the beading hardware I had on hand. All right, the paint job is done. And that might be the fastest I've ever done a paint job on the channel. Like seriously, that took me 10, 15 minutes. That's truly insane for me. But I'm very excited now. We can start beating. And with that last dollop of hot glue burning my fingers, this ribcage corset is now complete. That's all folks, she is done. Okay, final verdict on the ribcage corset. I absolutely love how this came out. I think the ideas meshed really well and I was also very surprised that I was able to do this in such a short time frame. I think I ended up working on this in like two days or something like that. But I think if I worked a little bit faster and got my act together a little bit more, I could have even done this in one day. So overall, a very easy breezy and very enjoyable DIY. If you wanna do this yourself, you could do it very easily and inexpensively, you could definitely go for like the hot glue method, maybe use foam clay. Um, it does definitely help to have a dress form, but it's like not entirely necessary. You could like figure out something else if you really want to sculpt it onto a separate surface from your body. Get yourself some cheap beads and then whip up something kind of similar. I love it. I think it's really cute. If this video helps you at all in your pursuit of making one of these, great. <laughs> That's why it's here. Also why it's here, because I wanted to do this. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you would like to see more spooky content like this, consider subscribing. I still have at least two spooky videos coming out this season. Although I'm thinking about moving my release of my big Halloween project to the first week in November, just to give myself a little bit more time to work on it so that I don't go insane. If I do that, there will still be an upload next week. But if you want to see the progress on my big Halloween costume build, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as low as $1 a month. I'll be posting updates there. You can see the insanity unfold. And on that note, the biggest thank you for these videos, of course, goes to my patrons and especially my executive producers. Liana, Armler Jean, 
Anubix, Breeza, Elizabeth Smith, Bean the Bread, I Hang Out with Cats at Parties, Bobo McFoe, Freya Wolf, Gravity Drop, Sweet Winter Garden, Katie, Hypnos, India Gloom, Enozyne, Megan Penland, Meeks Hunter, Eloquent Silence, Low Visa, Thea Maia, Agent Dot Sketchy, The Cat's Bark, Alwyn Hayes, Shay Lee, Zyle S, Dodo, Cat, Small Underscore Creeper, Francesca Sliwa, Freedom and Gus Gus, Sam Alama Ding Dong, Rose Kofrick, Rose Jaconi, Phoenix, Brian, The Cat Buses Early, and Miss Wicked. Okay, bye!